some etching this morning using a variety of resists on copper. We've used P and P. We've used paint pens. We've used spray paint. Uh, and then we're progressing now to etching steel for the purposes of making embossing plates like this one. So this is just a piece of mild steel bought at Home Depot. The setup is really simple. It's salt, water, and I originally used a lawnmower battery and we're going to be using a car battery today. Lots of fun. Don't electrocute yourself. And uh, we're using them to make embossing dies that create texture in relatively fine foil, but it picks it up super, super well. You could press heavier things, and we're doing this in the hydraulic press. So I will pass this around. It's heavy. Ooh, there you go. Um, the resist that we are using today is cut vinyl and electrical tape. You can use any kind of electrical tape. You can use contact paper. The thinner uh, resists that we use when we do copper etching don't hold up very well to the electrolytic process, so I don't recommend using them. P&P paper, not good, undercuts right away. Thinner things like Sharpie, not good, undercuts right away. So you really need something with some body and some substance to get a deep enough etch in steel to really have it register. So that's why something like a vinyl cutter or going to a local FedEx or Kinko's and having them make vinyl cuts for you or even just freehanding it with a X-Acto knife and some contact paper or electrical tape works really well. So once you have your design, we're going to be doing this fetching herringbone pattern today, um, which I'm happy to say a machine cut out and not I. We're going to block out the rest of the material because whatever is exposed is going to be acted upon by this process. So this is electrolytic etching, which means we are creating a le an electrolyte, uh, in this case salt water. The addition of salt makes water much more conductive of electricity. And then we're going to be connecting our piece to the anode, or positive. And then we're going to be connecting to a piece of waste metal, or in this case, a floating stainless steel bowl um, for our negative. So that we're uh, completing the electrical current within the saltwater bath and drawing the steel away from the plate selectively. So uh, it is important to be careful and not complete the circuit personally. <laughs> We're just using regular table salt, and um, I've worked it out so that we're, we've got a level on our little container here. Fill it up to here with water, and then add a teaspoon of salt. Salt, spoons. Easy. And then it, uh, it also contaminates... Once, once you start etching, of course, all of the material that you're etching away goes into solution. And so you may have to change the water out. I'm keeping all of the water, and I ask that you guys pour the used solution into here so that we can let some of the water evaporate off and dispose of it properly. It's basically ferric chloride, but I still don't think we should pour it down the drain, so. So these are just regular alligator clips that I bought at Harbor Freight and I cut one end off the alligator clip because I like taping the positive end to the back of the piece. If I use the alligator on the end, then I have to have some bare metal in the front of the piece and it also starts to etch the alligator clip. So and you, you're destroying your tools, which is counterintuitive in my book. I've also done this process with a cell phone charger. If you use one that's DC and puts out between 8 and 12 volts, it works, but it works very slowly. So this is an example of one that was done with a DC charger, this DC charger, and it was probably in there for about an hour, and you can see it's still pretty faint. So I, we're going, since so many people are in this class, we're going for something a little more aggressive and we're going to be using the big battery. The reason I prefer, if I can, to use the cell phone charger is you plug it into the wall and it just keeps 
going, unless you short it out, which can happen. But um, the battery, of course, gets used up and it has to be disposed of and it goes, it increases the waste that we produce and generally try to avoid that. But sometimes you just need a battery. So this is ready. So it's been taped. I've protected it as much as I can and it's attached to the positive. So now this is going to wait. You have to have a second piece of metal to complete um, the conductive cycle. And I like stainless steel because it doesn't make as much of a muddy mess in the water. The water still gets muddy. Uh, and the reason I use a bowl is because I can put the anode, the piece that I'm etching, on the bottom of the bowl of salt water. And I can float the bowl on top of it. Because of course you don't want them to touch each other. Because that will short out the circuit. Uh, but because the bowl contains air, it floats may seem very obvious, but if it floats, it can be immediately on top of and have a very direct access to what it's, what it's um, creating the current with. So that means you get a much more even etch. If you put two pieces side by side in a pan, you will etch unevenly and you will have to constantly turn your piece. But if they're one above the other, then it's much more even. So. Between eight and twelve. 